Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom. It's not Sunday with the holiday Friday yesterday. Today feels like Sunday. We don't feel like doing anything. Yes, we just want to relax and enjoy and have a good time. But today is Saturday, so it's a regular work day for us because the boss is an asshole. All right, this morning we woke up to minus 12 Celsius, but feels like minus 17, which is lies. Look, no Grinch gloves. It's warm, but I'm not risk taking the me phone out of the whole shack. All right, and on the oil scale, plus 10 Fahrenheit, but feels like plus one. See, I told you it's warm out here. All right. So also too, the older I get, the smaller things get. Yes, including my Speedo. Yes, and look at these. These are the world's smallest candies. I remember being a kid, these were so large in my mouth and everything. You know, now they're so small, they should be called Tic Tacs. Unreal, but the price has gone up. It's about double or triple the amount we paid when we were kids and got four times as much. But that's the joys. Nothing we can do about it. We, we live in the new world. All right, let's risk it all by taking the me phone out. And of course, we got some lame ass snow. Where's the snow? Month of March, we should be getting lots of snow. Plow, 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 plow. But not this year. We got a skiff of snow to make everything slippery for the old guy. Oh, that's me. All right. The sun is trying to come up over there somewhere. It's overcast. It's kind of a sprinkly snow. It did that all last night. Unreal. And I untangled the flags. They look so good. Yes, and they show up good in the pictures because an overcast day yesterday gives us good pictures because there's no shadows. But the colors show up even better. Yes, I'm colorblind and I can see the colors. All right, so over here, the big trees that we fresh killed didn't burn last night. So all I did was open the door of the stove, toss in some fresh kindling known as those core boxes, and the stove is good, good to go. And you can see there's snow on the roof, so that means it's not warm yet. As soon as that stove puts out the heat, that uh, roof will become snowless around that stack, but oh well, and hopefully we get some time before the rains come to put the ridge cap on but we can only do that when there's no snow on the roof because i don't want to slip and fall especially at my age when i hit the ground i'll probably break something yeah and spill my beer all right so today we're going to be working in the shop on the td18 known as Dooley. yes oh i better get this back inside where it's warm it's going to censor me all right we better get to work because here comes the boss because it is saturday Saturday morning in Whoville and it's just after 8 a.m. and I'm finally rolling out of bed. As you can see, there's a bit of a sunrise but it's hiding behind the clouds and it is still snowing. A little bit of snow came down last night and it's still going today. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, and make breakfast. 11 a.m. and I just got the skidoo out. Now I'll head up and do some shopping. We don't actually have to grab much today, just some sale things and fill up the water jugs. And I don't think we'll be doing much in the kingdom this afternoon because it is snowing right now, so we can't really do anything. Now let's head shopping. 11.30 and I just got back from shopping for the one bag and two water jugs. It was $119, but they had stuff on sale, so I grabbed a few things. There's a bunch of tomatoes in there as well, so my dad will enjoy those on his tomato sandwiches. Now it's time to haul everything inside and make lunch. 1 p.m. and I just finished up lunch. Now it's time to head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. He asked me to bring the toboggan over and fill it up with some firewood for him from the tank shed, so let's get going. Just after 1 p.m. and I made it to the kingdom, my dad's going to jump on the mini and go down and grab a couple trees out of the pile. And while he does that, I'm going to fill up the toboggan out of the wood shed and bring it over to the shop for him as well. I also have to take the branches that we sliced off from all the trees the other day and put them back into the pile as well so we can use them again later. Just dropped all the branches off into the pile. Now I'm over at the wood shed. I'm gonna fill up the toboggan as much as possible. That way my dad has enough wood for the next couple days. Just after 1.30, I got the toboggan filled up. Now I'll take it down to the shop for my dad. I got it up as high as I could. There's not much left in the shed here, so we might have to go down to the wood pile and grab some next time, but hopefully this will last him a couple days. Got the toboggan down by the shop, but it looks like my dad brought over a couple white trees here so we can cut those down to size so he can bring them inside. I'm just waiting for him to come with the mini and a few more trees.
2 30 and we just got all the trees broken down and cut into lengths for my dad he can haul them into the shop whenever he wants to it was a lot of work we've never actually cut up this many trees before normally we use pallets and core boxes and other things but this is a lot of trees just after 2 30 and i'm done in the kingdom make sure to grab my dog treats and the pan for tomorrow we are going to have a nice rib supper with potatoes and carrots and all that for our sunday fancy dinner now it's time to head on back into whoville and do the weather Almost 3 p.m. and I just made it home from the kingdom and put the skidoo away. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, and then I'm going to do a little bit of gardening and check on all my seeds. 4.30 and I just wanted to give you guys a little update on my big red chili peppers. Looks like I have another one coming in. Doesn't this look cute? It's almost the size of my pinky now. Hopefully they actually stick and get a lot bigger. I even have this big red chili pepper here growing as well. It's not as big, but it's slowly getting there. Hopefully this one sticks because they are getting pretty big. I have about four in total growing. Now I'll show you guys my big, big red chili pepper. And here we have my big red chili pepper. It is longer than my hand now and doesn't even fit into the camera anymore. It's looking pretty good and hasn't broken off yet. So I'm hoping it continues to grow. Soon it should start changing color. Little update on my cucumbers and peas. They are growing like weeds. It is crazy how fast they are sprouting out. One more day and I'll have to change them into pots. Then they can start growing in there. And once they outgrow the pots, I can move them into the big ones. By then I should be able to have them outside. Five o'clock and this is the temperature we're sitting at today. It's negative five degrees Celsius, which is 23 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It's been pretty warm out there today and lots has melted since that little snow we had. Now it's time to head inside, make supper, let the dogs out and end my day. Okay, coffee time in the kingdom. We're done outside. It's too warm, too sunny, too bright. So I was working on the TD-18 this morning and I'm doing repeat of what we did with the other TD-18. So I didn't record it because... Uh, it's called boring, like a marriage. But over here, we got some firewood, and now we'll go have a quick coffee with some beverage in it, and then we can begin production again. Okay, just about 5.30 in the kingdom, and we got the manifold on. We couldn't quit until the manifold was on because the gasket goo and everything has to dry, okay? So this is the second time we've done it, but we did it differently, all right? Also, too, I'm not getting fancy because what we did with the Blaine, the other TD-18 we did first, Went out for a little test drive, pulled the drag and the sugar snow really didn't work hard and we called it a great success. That would be equivalent to me quitting drinking for one day and then telling everybody I'm a recovering alcoholic. So I'm not pleased, uh, how would you say we don't trust with this here because we have those little rubbers up in here that seal it out, okay? The proper design would be to machine something in a thermostat sat in where those rubbers are because those rubbers can rot away and take off and be in the water pump in the bottom of the radiator. Okay, so this is what we did. We did it the same as we did. So that way, if we have one mistake, we have two mistakes. There's no sense trying to recreate the wheel or reinvent the wheel. So, but this time when I welded it, I put this uh, cold weld stuff on. Okay, it's a JB Weld of Permatech. Permatech, okay. Sir Rodney sends this, up, this stuff up to us because it's good stuff. We used it before on fixing the axles on the 46 Chevy two-ton, yes. And then over here, I got my little tub there. With all the plates, all the jimmies, the rigs, everything to do the um, the thermostat housings again. So if we have one of these leaking, we can, uh, how would you say, remake and regroup, okay? So today was a little boring day, but that's what it takes to get things done uh, twice. So we do it once on the big one, uh, once on one cat, and then we do it again. But also too, remember, we did all the thermostats on the TD6s and the TD9, so that there's... Uh, what, six right there? No, ten. Oh my god, I can't count. Yes, four little ones and uh, four big ones. That's eight. Oh, I still can't count. I better go count my beers. Okay, we're going to be short some videos. So we'll add something from what we did in the past. That's not a rerun, because if you guys haven't seen it, that means it's not a rerun. And yes, this is firewood in the wilderness Alaska land of the toothpick trees. Nope, but in northern Manitoba. Oh, good day in the kingdom. It's holiday Monday because the government took the day off for Monday, so we took it off too. As you can see, we got lots of welding to do. It's better to make a list of what not to weld than what has to be welded. So we do all the welding on the inside of the dash or the firewall again to make it look work, look pretty or make it last because the roads are rough up here. And over here, 
is where the mirror is. This is where the mirror was for the truck. Everybody had a good time welding on it, brazing it, and everything like that, so we had to fix it up. And we use a feeder rod here. I don't know if you can see it, but I feed it in with the MIG welder. And the main thing is, is I have to weld in to gap to the plate that's behind it, the support. So it kind of looks funny, but we got brazing rods, everything in there, rust, and then the MIG welder ran out of gas, so I had to use the argon, so that made it even worse. But oh well, I'll grind it, and it'll hold the mirror. Talk to you later. Well, it was a good day in the shop today. We ended up putting some more lights up here because the other lights there are dirty or whatever. But now it's, we're like a real body shop. We're able to work on the truck here, the cab. We've welded and fixed, but on this side it was missing for some reason. I don't know where it went, so we had to fab. Had to fake everything, like my first ex-wife. But we got it done. Tomorrow the staff can help flip it over on its back so we can weld underneath. But what saved the day today was this three-in-one roller bender thing, which I am learning how to use. But I seem to be making my bends and angles and shear cutting and seem to be doing all right. All right, I'm going to go drink some beer because we worked hard. All right, talk to you later. Okay, quick start to the video. The staff is here. It's 3 o'clock coffee time and we're going to flip the cab back over where it's to be. I did all the welding underneath, made it look pretty. Uh, this uh, kind of got the wrong paint, but I was given some paint that was frozen, three years old, and it still comes out as a spray can, but not very well. But the main idea is to get the metal protected because we don't know where we're going to get some paint because we are still in the COVID-19 lockdowns and paint at the end of the world is hard to come by. Well, we worked late again, but oh well, the dogs will get used to being late. All right, we mounted the heater. We used the template off the other vehicles because the template that comes with the heater doesn't work. We have drilled so many holes to have it wrong. So the heater's in. The master cylinder and brake booster out of an 86 Suburban that came from Wisconsin fits nicely, but I cut the firewall out to get rid of the cross braces and stuff to make it nice and smooth. And then over here, oh, see how pretty that turned out after lots of grinding? And in here, the brake pedal is ready for the steering wheel. So that's the joys of having done it, what, four or five other times on the other trucks in the yard. I just walk out and take a measurement. And I don't know if you can see the black heater in the corner, but it's all coming together. And now to go drink some beer. Talk to you later. Ah, it's a nice sunny day. The staff and I worked through coffee to get this project together. As you can see, we have quite a few of these trucks, so it's easy when you copy off the other ones. So the 45 Chevy now has a motor installed and the cab back on. First time since probably 1989, I think it was. I was married with children back then, but my time was limited. But we got the motor in, it all fits in, everything's looking good. And now we can go drink some coffee. Well, it's quitting time, we had a really good day, but we also worked non-stop. So the boss is treating us to a little Captain Morgan, I guess you call it, some pirates rum. Oh well, but the cab fits, we're quite pleased. Now we can work on getting everything else lined up. And the parts are here. And we also got new bolts because we had to drill out the rivets to fix all the spring bushings and everything. All right, so now the time to go drink some beer and relax because we worked hard today. Talk to you later. All right, Friday in the kingdom, we're working late because we have to finish a few things because we're getting things done here. We got the fuel filter sitting properly, started with the heater hoses, got an air cleaner that actually fits. And the main thing is it has to suck warm air off the intake or the exhaust manifold over here. That's my finger. And the spring perches or brackets are coming along nice. They're bolted in with those fancy bolts. And the cab is officially mounted on the frame for the first time since 1989. And being Canadian, we mounted it using hockey pucks. Totally Canadian, eh? Well, we'll talk to you later. Gonna go drink some beer. Saturday night in the kingdom, we're finally done. We did an all day or non-stop to get this to fit. I don't know what I was thinking or drinking, but I thought the two-speed shifter lever for the rear end bolted to the transmission. But it's a new style transmission but I had to keep the original bracketry in case my daughter puts the original motor and transmission back in. Then the next problem I had, the original uh, clutch and brake pedal bolt on the three little bolts on the side of the bell housing, no other supports. 
But I get carried away and I made a nice one here. All right, we'll see if we can get works like that, eh? Plus, we have to use some hockey pucks to make the cross member mounts for the transmission. So it's kind of overkill, but then again, the roads are bad up here. So we're, we're anticipating problems. All right, the beer's calling me, my vodka's calling me, and it's supper time. Talk to you later. Well, we had a slow day in the kingdom for being a Sunday, but uh, I don't know, I had a big day yesterday working hard, or it could be the amount of beverage I drank. I did make a mistake again for the first time in my life. I had to sink this down, or cut it and push it back in to get the master cylinder to be level, perfection, or making it look good. It has to work. And then over here, we got the brake pedal all mounted in. And that's the 86 Suburban from Wisconsin. We modified it. We cut the brake pedal. And we even have different heights here. Oh, there's my hand. We even have different heights here, just back like in the 30s and the 40s that GM was doing. I guess that's so the blind people can drive. They can feel the pedals with their feet. And we put the gas pedal on from the 46 Chevy welding truck. I mounted that back 30 years ago, so it bolted right in on this truck. And then we put the parts wheel on. And you don't hook up the pitman arm because you want to get it to free, free full or free, free turn. So then you know if you have any uh, binding or anything like that because you're mounting the steering column to the firewall and everything like that. All right, so now I'm going to go eat some supper, drink some beverage, and relax. Talk to you later. Okay, it was a good day in the kingdom. We ran some brake lines from the master cylinder down. We have to dress this up here. Oh, there's my hand. We have to dress this up because we have to put a proportioning valve. That's a big word. Try and spell it. But down here, GM or Chevy always puts the fitting on the inside of the frame. I move it outside because it's easier to work on. Plus, we put rubber in here because it's going to, you know, be rough roads up here. And we also put everything in the center and equalize the pressure. Because Chevy uses the one circle system where the brake pressure is on the one side of the truck. So in the winter, the wheel always locks up. But over here, we got the fuel lines all made and everything. But as you can see, we have trouble bending the, the tubing. But I got a brand new bender, but it's actually a kinker. See, we did lots of stuff today. We even made some nice kinks. But over here... It's 25 feet of quarter inch brake line to use on per truck. We have to pre-make everything for the hoses to fit. And these are for the other trucks. Um, Rodney at West Trans keeps us with uh, lots of inventory, as you say. All right, we'll go to the back of the truck, try to follow along. We won't be putting the gas tank under the seat because sitting on a bomb doesn't excite me. It's like driving a Pinto car. And so I'll put the fuel tank back here somewhere. We'll have to figure it out. And we did get the rubber brake line for the rear end all mounted. But the wooden blocks are in there to get the truck level. And we got the dash off and we found grandpa's wrench that he lost. It was probably when the train hit him. And I'll include a picture of that when the truck was hit by a train in 1947. And we call that the end screen is what the social media says. All right, I'm gonna go drink some beer and talk to you guys later. Okay, good day in the kingdom to tie in the brake lines to the back of the truck. We also include the wires for the tail lights and brake lights. So if you're tying in one line, might as well tie in the wires too. We decided to put the fuel tank on the driver's side of the truck, so we have to make some changes. Everything is going good. We got the wires tucked in nice, and it's starting to come together. But seeing how I'm colorblind, we only use certain colors because why should I buy color for other people to enjoy? But at my age, I have to mark everything down. So this is all tie strapped in, rubber mounted, so it's coming together because the roads are rough. I did change the fuel line at the front here. I didn't like it, so that's why the fuel tank went to the driver's side. So that looks a lot better. And it'd be easier to fix at 40 below when the little hose or something malfunctions because it's frozen. And then over here, I'm sitting on my bar stool again, playing with my little toggle switches and my inline fuses because everything is shrink tubed and done right because of the cold weather up here. And we wired in the starter because we're going to go for a test drive hopefully this weekend. I don't know where we're going because Dairy Queen isn't open. But we're running two master switches. Okay, there it is over there. And we're copying off the Caterpillar cats and everything like that with a negative ground master switch. So that's for all my negative ground. And over here, 
we can't run keys uh, in the Great White North because a key only keeps an honest thief out. So we run these other toggle switches or master switches up here and they work pretty good because it takes a while for them to figure out how to smash it or break it to get it going. But it's coming together and we'll be putting the battery back here in a toolbox or something like that. We haven't figured out what we're doing. But we got everything all done right, soldered and marked. I don't know if you can see that because I'm colorblind so I kind of use one color. But that all works out. And everything's good to go. Well, now to go drink some beer. I worked hard today. Talk to you later. Just about coffee time in the kingdom and it's my lucky day. I'm taking flat steel here. Shelves from the mine, they're probably 1950s or 60s, cutting it into strips, rolling it on my fancy sockets. Oh, I'll pick that up later. Rolling it on my fancy sockets, using all my vice grips to hold it, to make these heater duct or defrost ducts on these heaters. So that's the 46 Chevy, and this is the 45 Chevy. So this is the end product when we get it done. It's not perfectly straight or round, but once the heater tubes on or the defrost tubes are on, it'll look good. Now I have to make one of these because I'm missing one. I don't know where it went. Maybe I sold it for beer. But it doesn't look pretty, but it's going to work and keep me warm. Well, we push the limits of creativity being sober. I had good luck with the little round things for the heater, so I made the little snorkel tube there for the defrost. Now I just have to get Sir Rodney to send me the hoses so we can have defrost, and then we can put the dash back together. It's a lot easier to work on the dash or the truck when it's no dash or anything in there. But they got the dash upside down in the workbench here, and we're wiring in the lights and everything else. We use the toggle switches underneath the dash so we're not cutting up the dash or making a mess. Everything is marked individual fuses so you can shine the flashlight through the fuse to see if it's burnt. Okay, because you got to remember these trucks are used in the winter. If they quit, we have to fix them quickly because your fingers are freezing, you're getting useless, and, you're, and it, you're freezing to death. So this is one thing we do. Plus, I'm even nice enough to mark everything for people down the road to figure out. So that is the color red according to the magic marker. So that means it's hot. All right, I'm going to go drink some beer. Talk to you later. Okay, that bright sun went away because it's too bright on the eyes and the dogs are ready for the walk. Yes, we put some wood in the wood stove. Yes, those toothpick trees. Yes, they burn nice. Yes, we don't waste or throw anything away here in the wilderness, Alaska, but in northern Manitoba. Also in the kingdom, we recycle, reuse, repurpose. A lot of people think we're nuts to drag those trees in to burn them. But hey, it's free firewood cleaning up the yard. Hopefully we get some more snow because we need snow because we want to go out on some more adventures. Pull the cabooses, pull the sleighs, pull everything, have some fun and maybe get the Lynn tractors out. And there's the flags in their natural state of being almost limp. All right, let's go walk the dogs, make a video and drink some beer. Well, first count the beer and then drink some beer. Talk to you later.